I just wanted to quickly share with you the easiest way to test Angular services I've found so far, so that you can write uh, better code by having easy and effective tests for your application. So here is one service that is receiving some products from the backend API in the, from the CRM in this case. So it gets the raw data from the service, from the server, sorry, and then it filters it down, it checks which products it needs, goes over each parameter, and then builds basically the products that our uh, front-end single-page application will use. This is not Angular-specific, you can use this trick in pretty much any JavaScript function. And actually what this service does is not that much important. What is important is the data it uh, receives here at the input, and also the data that it returns back here at the end. So here is how we can quickly write one test for it. If we would somewhere at the beginning make a breakpoint and then start a debugging session inside the Chrome. I'm using Visual Studio Code here, but I will show you how to do that in a PHP Storm or any IntelliJ editor. So we have the application running here. If we would call this service now, our code would expectedly stop here at our breakpoint. However, we are not interested in this one. We are interested in the input data. So if you check here in the variables, we can actually see these available packages as an array of data inside of here. So what we want to do is we want to copy the value of that input. And then we want to go into our service spec file and have some variable like the input variable. In this case, I have predefined available packages, but you can make this variable according to your service. So we just paste this data here. And now we have the input data that we are going to uh, mock our service or test our service with. So if I collapse this so that we can see, you can see that there is a bunch of data, the raw data that's coming from service, from the server. Obviously, this is just a mock that data I made for this video, but you would have a lot of things here. So we have the input of the function. And then if we go back to our service, we can now stop at the very end of the service or the method, sorry. In Visual Studio Code, we can actually stop behind this code. So I will stop here just so that we have this complete uh, product defined. If I would continue now, resume our application, we will stop here before and then we will stop here after. And then we have our variable complete products in this case. So if I would just copy the value, go back to our test and then as an expected results or expected products in my case, I would just paste this value that our function has returned in the real life. So this is very useful if you already have a service that is not tested and you want to quickly make a test for it. But also if you already have some tests and you just don't want to go defining everything that your methods should do. And if you don't have this test environment set up, I will later in this video show you how to set it up both in Visual Studio Code and in IntelliJ Editor. It takes just a few minutes, so it's not that hard. And now we can just, let me collapse this one. And now we can just actually test our service. We can assert that it is returning the true data. So we can say that we expect our service to adapt our products by providing it the available packages that we have just copied here. And we want that to equal our expected results, right? So the expected products in our case. If I were to run this test now, we can see that it's failing. And that is because I have to convert the expression to unknown because I'm missing some fields. So I can do that as uh, unknown as server response because TypeScript is complaining. Let's repeat the test. And now we have executed five out of five. So we got the success. So th that means that this test is actually working. So now it's very easy to change some of the input values. For example, let's say that our uh, server suddenly uh, changes the uh, type of the name here. So it's not external name, it's, it's external name uh, new or something like that. If we run our tests, we can see what is happening and we can see that our tests are failing. In that case, we are protected from any changes. Now, if uh, this is back, but if we, for example, need to change something uh, or we see that some result is not right, for example, some price for our or some property for our product is not correct, we can easily go here and type in the expected value, for example, 55, and then we can just go and change our service and fix the code and uh, do whatever it takes so that we can get the desired results we made here into the 
expected products variable. It is also very useful. You can copy this multiple times and you can make different variations based on different responses you are expecting from the server and different responses you are expecting from your service, for example. And the service here adapts data from the server as mentioned, but I personally use this method to calculate campaigns in shopping cart or to show the correct campaigns or to determine the right prices. And this is way much easier method of development rather than writing, defining everything up front, especially when you're working with the data coming from the server, as it might not be that easy to define. As I recently had to do a lot of uh, refactoring in some services due to migration to a different backend system. So the data I was receiving from the API changed a lot. It was completely different, but my app, of course, was supposed to continue working as expected. So there were a lot of tests to change, but I also like this simplified version because it sped up my changes quite a lot. And sometimes it might be too difficult to create a bunch of copies uh, to test all these output combinations. So here's another trick that's particularly useful if you are if you want to test only some uh, changes. So the way you can do it is that you can utilize the array contain from uh, Jasmine or Yasmin or object contain depending on the data that you want. Then you can just ask if the result contains the product name in this case, product one and the product name, product two, product three, product four, etc. And if you see that your function is, for example, not return this product four, then you can just adjust this expectation basically and then you can continue developing all the way until you get the correct output from your function. Now I'm sure that this way of doing it breaks probably a ton of best practices and patterns however at the end of the day majority of us are paid to bring quality solutions and do it fast so there is always the balance of time used and the quality of code and by using automated tests at all you will increase quality of your code and by getting there fast you are increasing the speed so in my book this is not a bad solution at all. And one more tip, if you deleted this spec file, you can just uh, use the CLI to generate another service with similar name and then change the reference to it. Or you can just copy or reuse some of the previous tests. As you've seen, it's not difficult at all to replicate and to set up. And I hope that this technique helps you write a better code. So share it with your colleagues and friends who are using Angular and consider subscribing for more tips. Let me show you how to set up all that's needed to debug and test this in uh, Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ. So for the Visual Studio Code, you need to download a debugger for Chrome extension from the official guide. I'll put the link in the description. So you should follow this tutorial for debugging Angular code for the Studio Code in case they change something. So my video is uh, too old and or not relevant anymore. So basically in your extensions, you just install the debugger for Chrome. I have already done that. And once you install it, you would need to configure a Chrome debugger. So you would uh, just type Control Shift D or press Control Shift D to get to, to your uh, debugging. And then you would click this gear button here to create a configuration. In this case, I already have the configuration here. But the only thing you need to do is to change this port of the localhost from 8080 that was originally 24. 1200 or wherever your application is running the 4200 is the default so you change it like this and then you can do basically what i shown you you can just launch the chrome from here and launch it against the local host so from here you would go to start debugging and the chrome should launch your application and you should be able to set up the uh, breakpoints by just clicking here on the left so somewhere in your file uh, for example at the very beginning not right at the beginning, but try the first line, for example, here or somewhere here. And then once you have the breakpoint set up, you have a completely new world of possibilities. That way you can, for example, uh, call your service if you've never uh, debugged the Angular application. You can just continue using it and uh, the application will be basically pause on the breaking point that you have set up. And then you can inspect the values that are your application dealing with in real time. And to run it, you can use the console from the Visual Studio Code. So you can uh, uh, write ng test here or ng run here. However, for me, it's not working for some reason. I don't know why. So I have to use the external console. But I basically just type ng test here. And uh, Angular has the everything that it needs installed via Karma. So that way you can run your tests immediately. And here I have the PHP Storm, which is IntelliJ editor. And it does basically the same thing, only a bit easier, in my opinion. Let me quickly fix this TypeScript thing by fixing the entire file. 
And from here, I can uh, even easier just run one specific test and I can instantly see the results uh, right from the editor. I'm sure you can do that in Visual Studio Code, but I'm very comfortable with IntelliJ, so I'm using that one. Now I have changed the package ID, so that's why my tests are failing. If I would change back this 555 to what is expected, I can rerun the tests and see that everything is green. So all our tests are passing and life is worth living again. And debugging in the IntelliJ is also very easy. As if I remember correctly, Angular application is already set up, so you don't need to do anything. You just need to click on debug and IntelliJ will run everything for you so that you can also set the breakpoints somewhere here at the uh, beginning, for example, and you can use your application, stop at wherever you wish. And from here, you would do the similar thing. You can just right click on the variable. However, here you would copy JSON rather than value because the value is actually six, five objects in this case, but we can just copy JSON and go to our, uh, to our test, remove the previous value and then just paste this one. However, IntelliJ can actually help you or the TypeScript in this case can help you format this JSON to the a bit better format. And then you can also write your or run your tests right from here. That way you can see if everything is good. I hope that this was useful. Please write me any questions if you have, if I uh, ran over something too fast so that I can clarify it a bit. Consider subscribing for more videos and I hope to see you next time. Bye.